Hare Krishna, welcome to all devotees. Now we start today's Bhagavatam class. Om Namo Bhagavate Vaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Sudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskrutam Naram Chaiva Narottamam. Devim Sarasatim Vesam Tatajayam Udirat. Krishna Prayeshu Abhadreshu. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, Bhagavati Uttama Shluke, Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki. Hare Krishna. Today we are continuing Chapter 8, Prayers by Queen Kunti, Shloka number 13 to 16. Hare Krishna. While Mataji is joining from mobile, let us recite the shloka which Mataji has said. Vesnam Viksha Tatesham Ananya Vishesh. Yes, Mataji. Ananya Vishesh. Atmana Sudha. Hare Krishna. Ah, so ho, ho, ho. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Ram. Hare Ram. Ram Ram. Ram Hare. Sudarshane na swastre na swanam rakshan vithadat vibhu. Uh, Mataji, you are not audible. Vyasnam Viksha Tattesham Ananya Vishayat Atmanam Sudarshanena Swastrena Swanam Rakshan Vyadadat Vibhu Antastha Sarva Bhutanam Atma Yogeshwara Hari Swamaya Vrunod Garbham Vairatyaha Kurutattave Yad api Yadapi Astram Brahma Shirahatvam Ogham Cha Apratikriam Vaishnavam Tej Asadya Sam Shamyat Bhukut Vaham Mamam Saha Hi Tada Ashcharyam Sarva Ashcharyam May Achute Ya Idam Maya Devya Srujati Avati Hanti Yes, Prabhuji, please read. Hare Krishna. Vyasanam Vikshatatesham Ananya Vishayatmanam Sudarshane na swastre na swanam rakshamam yadat vipuhu Antastas sarva bhutanam atma yogeshwaro harihi swamayangra swayamaya yavrnat garbam vairagya guru tandave yet yabi astram brahma sirastu amogam chaprijikyam vaishnavam teja Asadya Sama Asadya Sama Sabjat Bruguda Bruguda Vaga Mam Mastahi Etas Astadyam Sadva Sarva Mayes to the Yitam Maya Yadhevya Shuchidari Avanti Handi Ajaha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Kripa May Sita Devi Mataji Yes, Mata, yes, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Vyasanam Vikshyatati Sanam Vyasanam Mamanam Sudhasin
ಇದ್ರಾಗ ಗುರು ತಂತುವ ಯದ್ಯಾಪಿ ಆಸ್ತ್ರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಸ್ಥಿರ ಅಮೃತಂ ಚಪ್ರೋ ಚಪ್ರೋ ಚಪ್ರದಿ ಕಿರಂ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ತೇಜ ಅಧ್ಯ ಸಮಸ ಸಂಗೂತಿಯ ಆಚರ್ಯ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೂನಂ ಮಾತಾಜಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಭುಜಿ ವ್ಯಸನ ವೀಕ್ಷಯ ಅನನ್ಯ ವಿಶ್ಯಾತ್ಮನ ಸುದರ್ಶನ ಸ್ವ ಅಸ್ತ್ರೇಣ ಸ್ವಾನ ರಕ್ಷಾ ವ್ಯಾಧ ವಿಭು ಅಂತಸ್ಥ ಸರ್ವೂತ ಆತ್ಮ ಯೋಗೆ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಹರಿ ಸ್ವ ಮಾಯ ವ್ರಣೋದ ಗರ್ಭಂ ವೈರಾಟ್ಯ ಕುರುತಂತವೇ ಯದ ಅಪಿ ಅಸ್ತ್ರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಶಿರಸ್ವ ಅಮೋಘಂ ಚ ಪ್ರತಿಕ್ರಿಯ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ತೇಜ ಅಸಾಧ್ಯ ಸಂ ಅಸಮ್ಯದ ಭೃಗುತ್ವ ಆಶ್ಚರ್ಯ ಸರ್ವ ಆಶ್ಚರ್ಯ ಉಚ್ಯತೆ ಯದ ಮಾಯ ದೇವ್ಯ ಸೃಜತಿ ಅವತಿ ಹಂತೆ ಅಜ ಎಸ್ ಮಾತಾಜಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸುದರ್ಶನ್ ಅಂತ 
in no time. When the Lord saw that there was no time for the Pandavas to counter act the Brahma show of Ashwantama, he took up his weapon for a service of rain for its own home. Although the battle of Kurukshetra was almost finished, still, the Lord's bow should not have been done at all. He was more important than the whole. He is better known as the Bhakti Vatsal Vatsal of the lover of his beauty. This is what can simultaneously reside within everyone's heart. Or even within the atom bag is Paramatma feature. Its plenary portion, they are sure, from within the body of Uttara, he covered the embryo to save Maharaj Parishi and protect the progeny of Maharaj the Guru, of whom in Pandu was also a descendant. Both the sons of Dhritarashtra and those of Pandu belong to the same dynasty of Maharaj Guru. Therefore, both of them were generally known as Guru. But when there were differences between the two families, the sons of Dhritarashtra were known as Gurus, whereas the sons of Pandu were known as Pandavas. Since the sons and grandsons of Dhritarashtra were all killed in the battle of Kurukshetra, the last son of the dynasty is designated as the son of Gurus. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said that the Brahmajyoti or the glowing transcendental effulgent is resting on the Lord Krishna. In other words, the glowing effulgent known as Brahma Tejas is nothing but the rays of the Lord. Just as the sun rays are rays of the sun, this also this Brahma weapon also, although literally irresistible, would not surpass the supreme strength of the Lord. The weapon called Brahmasra. Released by Ashwatthama, was neutralized and foiled by Lord Sri Krishna by his own energy. That is to say, he did not wait for any other end because he is absolute. The activities of the Lord are always inconceivable to the tiny brain of the living entity. Nothing is impossible for the Supreme Lord, but all his actions are wonderful. And thus, it is always beyond the range of our considerable limit. The Lord is the all powerful, all perfect personality of God. The Lord is said perfect, perfect. Whereas others, namely Narayan, Mashu, the demigods, and all other uh, living beings uh, possess only different percentages of such perfection. No one is equal to or greater than him. He is unrivaled.
हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट टू इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट हियर हाउ लॉर्ड कृष्ण इज मोस्ट परफेक्ट एंड हाउ ही इज भक्त वत्सल और कृष्णा वी आर सींग दैट वन उत्तर मेड द कंप्लेट यू कुड सी दश्वत्थामा हैथ थ्रोन द ब्रह्मास्त्र in order to kill all the pandavas and especially the last of the pandava dynasty who was in the womb of uttara so you could see the great danger which was befalling his analoid devotees and that to the pandavas who have fully surrendered souls so he immediately took up his sudarshan desk to protect them now krishna we all know is a supreme lord of mysticism and he is there in everyone's heart as parmatma so to protect maharaj parikshit he covered the embryo of uttara by his personal energy so the brahmastra weapon was irresistible without check without counter action it was neutralized and foiled when confronted by the strength of krishna or vishnu so we should be very careful in understanding this particular episode of krishna leela <coughs> excuse me we should not think that uh, these are just wonderful activities of mysterious and uh, achyuta that is infallible krishna because by his transcendental energy he is able to create maintain annihilate all material things though he is unborn so many of the aspects that we have seen in bhagavatam till now get repeated in these four particular shlokas and that is why they become important for us to understand so we have all seen how the material world is a world of duality that we saw instead so krishna is the only shelter of fearlessness for the surrendered soul and that is why all the pandavas had completely surrendered to krishna and when we are speaking of brahmastra we all have seen in the descriptions given by prabhupad that it was a very subtle weapon it was unlike the nuclear weapons that we see today because it was produced by finer sounds and the mantras which have been recorded in the vedas and most importantly it was target oriented so it would attack only the person or the substance against which it has been targeted and nothing else so it was very very dangerous no one can be saved irrespective of whether he or she tries to hide himself and the object of ashwatthama's release was very clear he wanted to finish off all the male members of the pandus family so krishna understood this now in the previous shloka we saw that the pandavas have taken up their individual weapons to fight the brahmastra but then krishna knew that this is something which does not have a counter action so he immediately took up his own personal weapon that is sudarshan chakra to protect the devotees because there was no one else who could protect them and even they didn't know anyone else other than krishna krishna promises sarva dharman parityajya mam ekam sharanam raj aham tam sarva papebhyo mokshishyami ma shucha that if you are surrendering unto me i'll take care of everything you need not worry and then he also tells that please declare this to the world arjuna that my devotees do not have a fall down so krishna is giving this promises and you have to understand it clearly kshitram bhavati dharmaatma swachha anti nigachati kaunteya pratijani hi na me bhakta pranishat so the devotee never perishes so it was but obvious that krishna had to save everyone and for that though he had taken a vow 
that he will not fight in the war of Kurukshetra. And technically, the war was still going on because Vashwatthama had just released one weapon. So ideally, he should not have taken up his weapon. But he broke his vow. Because he has promised Name Bhakta Pranashyati. So to save his devotees, he is always eager. And that is why we know he is always called as Bhakta Vatsa. That is one of the names given to Krishna. And there also, he reciprocates the devotees to the quality or degree of the devotional service rendered by the devotees. So when you take 10 steps towards Krishna, Krishna also comes towards us. And if someone takes only one step, Krishna also comes simultaneously in that ratio only. So if we are completely surrendered to Krishna and take whatever are the possible efforts from our side, then Krishna will ensure that we are all he is always there with us. Ananya Vishyatmana. So this word which came in this shloka, Prabhupada says in the purport, is a very important word. Ananya Vishyatmana. And that is a truth. Because it helps us understand the details of how Krishna is always there. He is Ananya Vishyatmana. And we have to accept it. The Pandavas were 100% dependent upon Krishna. Though they were themselves great warriors. Huh? It's not that they were not great warriors. But still, Ananya Vishayat Manam, no other means thus inclined. That's what translation Prabhupada gives to those words. So, Lord, when he has to protect someone, he can neglect even the greatest warriors. And when he wants to punish someone, then he can vanquish them also in no time. That is what Krishna is. Bhakta Vatsala. And we all know his Yoga Ishwara, the supreme mysticism, Lord of Supreme Mysticism. And he is residing within everyone's heart, even within the atoms, in the form of his Paramatma feature, which is the plenary portion of Krishna. So he is there with everyone. So if it is there with everyone, what it means is was there with Krishna, with Uttara also. So what he did is with his energy he expanded and protected Parikshit Maharaj. Because he was the progeny of Maharaj Guru, the last of the descendants. Now, if you all remember, the Pandavas are called as Pandavas. But here for Parikshit Maharaj, the word is coming as the descendant of Kuru. Kauravana. So, how is it possible? He, why Kuru? Tantave. The reason is, though because of the family problems and fights, the sons of Dhritarashtra continued as Kurus and the sons of Pandu became Pandavas because everyone who belonged to Dhritarashtra had died. So now, the last of the possible progeny, Parikshit Maharaj, became the only possible descendant of Kuru Maharaj. And that is why he was designated as a Kuru Tanta Vehe. And the word uh, for Uttara which comes here is Vairatya. So we all know the story why she is called as Vairatya. So this way we see that Krishna can give up his own rules also when it comes to protecting his devotees. He is most perfect. In Bhagavad Gita we have seen that Brahma Jyoti or the transcendental effulgence that we talk about is actually 
the glowing effulgence or brahma teja of krishna so the comparison which prabhupad ji gives is that of sun disk and sun rays so krishna is the sun disk and sun rays is the brahman effulgence so similarly the brahmastra although materially irresistible could not surpass the supreme strength of krishna so krishna neutralized it by his own energy he did not wait for any other's help or anyone else to try because krishna is absolute the activities of the lord they are always inconceivable with our material tiny fragments of brain even if we try to understand maximum things we will end up with understanding nothing because krishna is purnah and we have seen this in uh, our studies earlier as well purnasya purnam adaya purnam eva ava shishyate so this shloka is very very important shloka so we should try to uh, remind ourselves of this particular aspects whenever we can so that this helps us to increase our complete faith in krishna and our surrenderance to krishna can increase proportionately so if even if something comes even if full comes out of krishna he still remains full and that is why he is absolute nothing is possible impossible for krishna and all his activities are always wonderful so whatever are our limits of understanding is beyond them adhoksha jah we cannot even see him realize him all powerful all perfect and in the purport prabhupada ji talks about how he is got all the qualities 100% of completeness and then how even narayan brahma shiva demigods they have got little lesser percentage so no one is equal to or greater than krishna he is advitiya he is unrivaled so we have to remember this perfectness about krishna and because he is so perfect when it comes to ensuring the goodness of his devotees he always takes the best of the efforts and takes care of all his devotees so the perfect krishna is bhaktavatsala hare krishna